peace and love, peace and love, peace and love, everybody. I know I said I was going to go live at 7. I apologize. It's 7.22, but my phone was about to die on me. And so I was like, I have to let my phone charge a little bit more before I actually go live. So y'all jump on in here and let's build on a Mercury Retrograde. It's a whole lot to get into. It's a whole lot to discuss. Um, it's a lot going on in these universal streets. Um, we also have that new moon. It's a new moon in Libra coming up. And so we have that happening and we still have Mars retrograding as well. And Mars is, uh, like I said yesterday, it's at its height so um, of its retrograde. So it's a whole lot of intense things happening, you guys, um, in a lot of our lives. It's a lot of intense things taking place, um, emotions all over the place. And so I want to be able to talk everybody through some things that might be happening. Let me know if you guys can hear me because I put my uh, headphones on because usually people say they can't hear me. So I know that I, um, I can be heard with my headphones on. So let me know if y'all can or if you cannot. But uh, all is well. Peace and love, Mike. Peace and love, Kevin. Peace and love. Peace and love. So the Mercury retrograde is going to be in Scorpio. And it's going to be for just a few weeks. And it's a lot of things that we need to go deeper about. Some things we need to be able to investigate. Things that we are willing to go deeper in. Things that, you know, the dark areas of our lives that a lot of people don't want to discuss. Um, and the things that need renovations in our lives. Areas in our life where we need to fix things, put things back together. Where we need the proper tools to heal. And we need to communicate properly. Okay, so... Virgos and Gemini's. This, this is your ruling planet. So this affects you guys the most. Virgo um, and Gemini sun signs, um, the ascendant, and if that is your moon. This has a whole lot to do with your emotions. This has a whole lot to do the next few weeks, you guys, of how you collect your information and feeling like you're going backwards. Feeling like you're going backwards and feeling like um, something is pulling you back or that your understanding and your clarity and things that you're looking for is further away from you than you want it to be. And it's going to feel like that for a few weeks. So this is a time right now, you guys, where it seems like there's a very dark space in our life and um, a lot of people. And there are renovations, like I say, to be made. So in this dark space of our life, a lot of us are going to have to be willing to go in the basement of our life and really clean things up and really um, know what to throw away and what to keep. Because this would I would call it the yard sale, which we have these often in life. OK, so this is a universal yard sale about what we need and what we don't need and what we're going to keep people, places and things and what we're not. So this is a time talking about your habits, um, smoking, drinking, things like that. This is a good time to stop habits. This is a good time to, like I say, Correct things, fix things, all of that, bury things. You want to think about it like a dark area in your life where this is um, a graveyard. So there are some things that we're going to be digging back up because this is unfinished business for a lot of us. And some of these things we're going to be laying to rest, people, places, and things, because it's specifically in Scorpio. Scorpio deals with endings. Scorpio deals with the death of things. Not always a complete ending because Scorpio also regenerates very, very well. So this is also Scorpio bringing things back to life. So these are also mending things and renovations, like I say, or some type of transmutation of energy that is going to be taking place the next few weeks. And we all need it. We all need it. So this is an area for everybody to get rid of stuff that has been packed up in their life or wherever you've been hoarding energy in your life. This is a good time right now to let go of any energy you've been hoarding and holding on to and anything that's causing blockages. So wherever there's resentment, wherever there is um, issues of triggers, trauma, violation, things like that, all of that is Scorpio. And this is a good time to put those things to rest, put those things to bed, no longer deal with those things. Scorpio is a very, very powerful sign. Scorpio is probably one of the most powerful signs. OK, and it's ruled by um, Pluto. And so everything that we're going through and everything that we're going to be dealing with is going to be our biggest tool is Pluto. And Pluto is our shovel, you guys. And so Pluto is what helps us dig things up. And Pluto is what helps us bury things. You can even call Pluto your magnifying glass. It helps you look at things a lot deeper when you're investigating things. So as we're blowing the dust off of people with places and things in our lives the next few weeks. Some of these people, like I say, are things we haven't seen in a while. 
We need to blow the dust off of it. We need to move forward. We need to um, get that apology or that closure or whatever it is that we needed from someone. And sometimes this is even a job or a situation where you lost something because Scorpio deals with loss. But Scorpio also deals with being found. It's the lost and found of your life. It's the salvage yard of your life. And so right now, as we are all vehicles, all right, as we're all in our vehicles, oh, peace and love, everybody. Look, you know, I get to talking. Peace and love, everybody. Peace and love, um, Willie. Peace and love, Tiffany. Peace and love, Tanisia. Mike. Peace and love, um, Nia. Donnell. Oh, you're watching. Uh, peace and love, everybody. Uh, you said, what are the houses? The houses are different areas in your chart, different areas in your life. Um, I always, always call it even different rooms in your house or your life. And so you, you can call it different things. Um, whether you I do a lot of things correlated to a house. I do a lot of things correlated to um, a car. However, you'll hear me use it different ways. But your houses are areas in your life um, where you need to fix things. So, for example, and every astrologer is different. I just have a way of helping myself remember things and helping my clients, people that I teach, my students, um, how to remember things. So like the first house, for example, because it's also your body. OK, so this is why I say it's different rooms in your house. The first house is talking about your head a lot of times. So when you're talking about different houses, just different areas where you do different things. And so where your head is, where people your face, you know, so that has a lot to do with your ascendant and how you appear and how people see you. And so the house is also where the first house is where you are the master are. You know, you're the master of that room. So we call it the master bedroom where you take care of self and where you put self first. And like I say, how people see you when you come out of the master bedroom. So this is how other planets see you. So without our human clothes on, you know, and without our bodies, however, we are still just planets and we are all still simply just energy. And so what happens in these different houses, this is how we try to collect, you know, colors and shapes together and say this is how this person looks based off of their energy. So sometimes I always say we've never really seen each other before. We all collectively agree on what other people look like and what somebody else looks like. Um, so all is well. There's no ugly, cute, any of those things. All Everybody just may agree on what, how somebody else appears. So that's a house. Uh, for example, that opposes your seventh house. Your seventh house is a house of relationships, connections, um, contacts, contracts. And so that we call we call that the guest room where you allow other people to come into your life. So it's a whole lot to that. Maybe I should do an astrology class because I know a lot of people are like some of the stuff, you know, a lot of people just know their sun sign um, or their sun, um, their ascendant or their moon sign. But it's important to know all of it, you guys. So you know how you move, you know how you operate. And it's kind of just like having your phone number. It's like your universal phone number. It's like somebody asking you, what's your area code? Or somebody asking you, what's your number? When you know your moon sign, sun sign, and ascendant, um, especially an astrologer, we know so much about you very quickly from that. We know who we're dealing with. So then when you're reading energy, you know, and sometimes you're not always going to be right. So you got to kind of know the signs and know energy when you're talking to people. A lot of times I don't even ask somebody their sign if I don't know them. I just treat them like the sign that they sound like. Um, usually that is, um, you know, their moon or their mercury, how they sound, how they talk. So this is how you kind of can de decide what kind of energy you're dealing with without directly asking somebody, um, you know, what, you know, what sign they are, you know, a lot of times a lot of people don't want to be asked that these days. However, so we'll get into that another time as far as the house is, but that does play out a lot because that's why I say everything that I'm saying right now is very broad because when you go into the houses, that's why it means something different for everybody in a different house. Um, so I'll go ahead and go into, like I said, the retrograde and I hope this information is useful for everybody. And this is just my interpretation. Everybody interprets it differently, but um, this is just the best way for me to help people kind of see. I like to be very visual. Let's go back to that. So Scorpio is, uh, I call it like it's the deep, dark, murky waters of the universe. Okay. And those are like the original waters. So remember that everything began with darkness and water. So I always say that that is Scorpio energy is the original and it's the beginning of a lot. And so I know that Aries is the first sign, but the energy, the original energy of the womb, of the body, of the woman and of the beginning. All right. Is Scorpio energy. So that's the mist and the waters and the darkness of it all. All right. And so when we're talking about that, those are more murky, dark, deep waters. When you're talking about cancer, those are initiating things. So that's the beginning. That's when you first stick your foot in the water. OK, Scorpio is when you're willing to go deeper 
and go deeper and darker and you really go to the bottom. OK, and that's why when you're going into this area, that's why I say this is the, the basement of a lot of people's lives. These are the private areas of our lives. These are areas where what happens in the basement, you guys, we hide things, we tuck things, we put things that we don't want to see anymore or deal with anymore or things we don't, you know, talk about anymore. The unmentionables of our life, we put in the master. I'm, I'm sorry, we put it in the basement of our life. And so this is why the basement of our life is not too close, but it's right across from and it's 150 degrees away from our master bedroom, meaning we keep those things far. All right. And these are things that we push down here. So right now, while we're retrograding in the area where we normally put things in here, uh, Mercury is making us retrograde and saying, go back in that room and clean it, fix it. There are things that need to be fixed. There are renovations that need to be made and you can't go nowhere. You can't go out to play or anything until you fix this area. So I would say anything, any issues you have with your health or anything like that, anybody who needs surgery, for one, I don't tell, I'll never tell people to get a surgery during a retrograde. All right. Scorpio is dealing with surgery or going deep under beneath the surface. So that's why we call it the mental, physical or the spiritual surgeon of the um, Zodiac is Scorpio. This isn't a good time to get surgery. And this is why I saying there's unfinished business. Something could go wrong. So if you have to simply get it and you have to go under a knife for any reason in the next three to four weeks, by all means, all is well. Pray. <laughs> But if you can choose or choose a date, and that's why I say timing is everything. There is a cycle. There are patterns of time dealing with the universe. So that's why you always want to be on beat. OK, and this is why when you're aligned, you are always on beat. You will never drop the beat. You know, you will always just be on. You have a really good rhythm about yourself when you're on the universal uh, beat of what's taking place. And a lot of people lose their beat. And this is why you miss out on a lot of things when you're not aligned. And when you're not aligned, it's not a good feeling. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how it may feel during your retrograde of knowing if you're aligned or not. So as we're going through Scorpio, let's just say that you guys, you're very, very valuable. You're a king. You're a queen. You have your crown on. And we have to go into a dark area in our life to cleanse some things out. And you have to be willing to go there with your crown on. And you have to be able to go down there and fix things without losing your crown, you guys. And so the royalty of it all and the value of it all and the appreciation of who you are and, and knowing what you have so you can go in this dark area of your life and go ahead and start going in this basement. And not a lot of people want to go in their basement because, like I say, what happens in the basement, um, we tuck things down there, we hide things down there. And there's sometimes a lot of violation and things that have happened in people's lives in the basement, which is why they stay away. Some people are scared of the dark. It's a lot of things that happen. There are some people you go in their basement and that's their den. That's where they watch TV. It's very organized. It's very cool. A lot of people have really made peace with their demons or things that have come into their life that deter them. You know, you go in some people's life, they demons down there, you know, watching cartoons and doing their homework. So, you know, some people really have their life in order where whatever happens, you can go in any area of their life and everything is clear and they're not hiding anything. And so where we have secrets at and where things have triggered us or where we have trauma at is where we have to investigate. We have pen and paper. All right. You have a phone on the other side of this deep waters that you got to go in. Right. And so you got to be willing to go deep down there. You got to be able to swim and you got to be able to hold on to your value and everything that you have while you're there. And Scorpio teaches you or asks you a question. Scorpio is the question of what are you willing to get rid of? All right. And what are you willing to throw away? Which is why we call this a universal yard sale. What are you willing to throw away when it comes to your life and replacing things and causing renovations and putting things back in order in your life? You are never going to always be the same you. And that's why a lot of us are. It's hard for us to ascend. And it's not just about ascending. OK, because we are all elevators, but the elevator goes up and this elevator goes down. And a lot of us, you know, we elevate and we ascend and then we go back down. And that is a part of life. But you're not supposed to go back down only to save others. And a lot of us go back down and we stay down. OK, and so this is where you misuse your wisdom and this is where we misuse our security and we don't use our our seatbelt properly. Our seatbelt is in Taurus. Taurus is what keeps us safe and secure mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. OK, so this is why Taurus is the investor or I would call it the banker. Capricorn is more of the investor. Taurus is the one that's holding it. So Taurus is what keeps your value in everything, you guys. OK, so 
if this is opposing Scorpio, this is why we have to keep our crown on and know that we're royal and everything because we're going against some dark energy, which is Scorpio. And it don't have to mean anything bad. It could be washing you and cleansing you or this could be something that pulls you very deep under. So this is why a lot of people might be walking around the next few weeks. Triggers. Things that have happened in the past, areas where you don't feel respected. Why? Because Pluto is in Capricorn. So Capricorn is talking about areas of respect, areas of where you might feel that you need to give out more limitations or areas where you feel like there have been limitations. Anything that is bringing limitations to where you need to um, transform, wherever you're trying to be different, wherever you don't want to be the same at, this is where we need to explore. And this is also where you're taking the test at. OK, the universe wants to make sure that you're getting everything that you want, but you also have to make sure that you're clear in every area. So right now there are renovations to be made or that's why I say we're moving some furniture around in our lives. Everybody it's some furniture moving happening and you have to be able to move this certain furniture around and without throwing anything away. Fix it back up. Do something else with it. And so even when it comes to your vehicle, that's why I say we're at the salvage yard of life, however you want to look at it, to where right now you're going through the salvage yard and seeing if you need any parts right now. You need to see if you need any parts right now when it comes to your vehicle so that you can get and collect everything that you're supposed to collect. Because if you're missing a rear view mirror, so you got to think about everything that's important about your vehicle. You got to be able to look back. You got to be able to check your blind spots and everything throughout your journey in life. And if you don't have all the parts to your car, this is why a lot of us are not whole people. We're not healed people. And then we have the nerve to let other people ride in our car with us. We got the nerve to take passengers and we're not going anywhere and our car don't work. Our vehicle don't work. Our radio don't work. We don't express ourselves properly. We don't beep the horn at the right time. We don't even know how to drive a car. OK. And so this is why a lot of us are sick. Our chakras are blocked and a lot of us are get getting led away from what's supposed to be for us. You got to know who you are and you can't be scared of the dark. You started out in the dark. OK. And that's when you find your light in it. And a lot of us are scared to be in it. You are you are the darkness and the light. And so you can't be scared of yourself. The light is in within you. You get what I mean? So you have to be willing to close your eyes because with Scorpio, you have to spend time with your eyes closed. Scorpio deals a whole lot with rest. OK. And that's why you have to regenerate. There are a lot of beautiful things that come out of dark places. Scorpio is one of those dark places where you can create and you can make beautiful things come out of where you um, are dark in your mind. <clears throat> it can be a very depressed, dark space. So sex <clears throat> and death are not far from each other. Sex and death are very much connected. OK. And so this is why even when you <clears throat> pass away, you have that last um, release. OK. That last release as we're passing away, right? You having your last breath. You also have that last release because they're so deeply connected to each other. And so this is why there's the bliss in everything you understand. And this is why there's no fear in anything. Once you understand even the bliss in that. Now we have to understand that even when we have sex, you also die. This is why you're releasing, you're releasing, right? So you have to be prepared for your death, right? So mentally, physically, and spiritually, because we die every day, correct? You're not the same person you were yesterday. You're not the same person you were six months ago. That person has died. And so this is why we replace ourselves through sex, because we also die at night when we rest, right? So this is when we come back. So this is why Scorpio was talking about your comeback. So a lot of times Scorpio, like I said, can be a very vengeful energy or a very vengeful sign, but we can use it in a different way. When we say vengeful, we are coming back. We're coming back with a vengeance. We're coming back alive. We're coming back not the same from the things that have happened to us. So I always say that you're either going to be um, the person who needs healing or you're going to be the healer when you're talking about Scorpio energy. And this is an area right now where we're all going to need the healing, you know, and we're all going to need somebody to help transmute the energy that's taking place. And this is why we call it recycling. We're not getting rid of it. We're just making it different to where we don't have to get rid of it. So that's why I say in our life, when we change our names and we um, correct our status and all those things, you're not throwing away the you that you always were. You just move the furniture around. So that's why it's harder for when other people come in your life, when you've made changes, that the couch not where it used to be. They come in bumping around and stuff because you're not the same person you used to be. They can't sit where they used to be. This used to be right here the last time they came in your house. They tripping over stuff and everything. Why? Because you have redecorated your life. And so this is why people are not going to be comfortable the same way they were in your life before people who have done you wrong. Or however, this is why we're getting our respect back. This is why we're finding ourselves. This is why we're finding our shovel. This is why we're finding out where we had lessons at and where we went wrong. 
This is where we're finding out where we crashed our vehicle at. And a lot of us have crashed our vehicles before. And Scorpio is the crash of the vehicle. All right. That is the lesson of life. And so this is why we're learning now when we've crashed our vehicles, this is what happens. And this is why you end up at the salvage yard. And that's why we all right now have to decide, are we starting over? Are we just going to get a whole new car or are we just going to get new parts? And some of us need a whole new car. Some of us need to die to live. Some of us need to just die and just end things and come back different. Some, some of us just need a little something here or there. And you have to know which one of you. And so if you know how much it's going to cost, if you have the time, the money, the energy to put the right um, changes into your life, then this is the time to do it. But people who can't afford it, if your vibration is low, if your vibration is down, you can't afford the transmutation. OK, because vibration is opposing the transmutation. You have to have a high vibration in order to transmute, you know, and so things can't heal and things can't come back if you don't have the money, if you can't afford it. So this is why a lot of people would they have to get a whole new car. You can't afford it. All right. Or your car has been totaled. Has your life been totaled? You're going to know in the next two or three weeks or not if you want to start over. You know, if you want to be something different, if you don't want things to be the same. A lot of us are the healers. A lot of us don't need the changes or the renovations. A lot of us are going to be doing the um, the renovations for someone else and be in someone else's life. And it's all going to be through communication. It's all going to be over the phone. It's all going to be um, in conversation up close, up front. A lot of us are going to be going into therapy. A lot of us need therapy. OK, so um, our mental our mental we need to work on that in our community. OK, our mental health is a thing. That is a thing. And it's a lot of things that don't get discussed. It's a lot of things that a lot of us are walking around with. Um, a lot of things that we don't he can't we don't trust people or you feel like you can't afford to be able to talk to somebody about things that's going on. And this is why a lot of us are further and further away from our bliss. And you can't get it until you do what you're supposed to do. And so imagine every time we retrograde, a plan is something that you need. A planet is holding it back. You know how like your older sibling or somebody like has something of yours and they hold it up so you can't get it out of your reach. That's what happens when we retrograde. The planet is saying, no, no, no. And I, 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 you know, until you do the work. Peace and love. Oh, most definitely, Derek, you have to have a high vibration if you want to transmute because the high vibration is the money. The transmutation is is the cost. You've got to have the money if you're going to make some changes. If you can't, if you don't have the money, how are you going to redecorate? You can't afford that. And people who can't afford it or feel like they can't afford it, those are the ones who are going to fall into the ditch. Those are the ones who's going to have to get a whole new vehicle. And that's why I say detachment is a thing. You have to be able to let go of things. And that's why Scorpio will always ask you, what are you willing to get rid of? What are you willing to kill? What are you willing to cause renovations to in your life? Do you want to, like I say, do you want to um, uh, trash this car or not? And this is what the universe is saying. And if you're willing to tra trash this car, OK, you got to do the work. OK. And so that's really all it is, is doing the work. You guys, you have to do the work. And a lot of us don't do the work. And so what we have to confront during this retrograde is our insecurities. Our insecurities is of what? A lot of us don't want to be criticized. Why? We got um, we don't want to be criticized. We worry about what people think. We strive for perfection. We want things to be a certain way. Right day, right time, right person, this, this and that. And we go by what we think and what our eyes tell us what is right for us. And so we have to use your inner eyes when you're talking about Scorpio. Scorpio can't see. Cancer can't see. Scorpio can't see. Pisces can't see. They don't have outer eyes. They have inner eyes. These are very intuitive signs. So this is inside work. This is an inside job. And you got to have your flashlight on on this thing. OK. And you have to pay attention to what's taking place. Right. Sun being in Libra has a whole lot to do with this as well. Because it's talking about our partnerships and people that accommodate us and people that we accommodate during our healing and during times like this. These are also disturbances and people who have lied to us and people who try to bully us or take advantage of us. This is where the resentment comes from. Wherever we didn't have um, enough strength, wherever somebody else took advantage of us or pushed us in the corner, Scorpio can do that. They can be bullies. That's Scorpio energy. They're very, very powerful. It's hard to tell a Scorpio energy no. So moon sign, sun sign, and ascendant Scorpio. Yeah, you got to know how to fight when you're talking to them because they don't fight fair and they don't fight with their hands. They do an internal fight within you. OK, uh, a Scorpio will make you fight yourself. You, they'll watch you beat yourself up over something that they inflicted. OK, so you have to pay attention to that type of energy It's a very sneaky, mysterious energy. And this is why I say 
especially when they're in lower self. So this is why I say you have to be able to not be afraid of the dark. You can't be afraid of what's under your bed. Go ahead and get what's under your bed during this retrograde. Don't let anything pull you from your bliss. Don't be so whatever that sound is in life. So Scorpio is that thumping sound, that scary movie sound in life. And you can't be scared to go figure it out. You know how people be like, huh? What's that? Who's there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't be scared to go down there at the same time. You know, um, you also got to be willing to go down there with the right tools. So with Mars retrograding, your tool is your gun with Mars. But think about it. You're going downstairs, but you don't have your gun because that's retrograding as well. And that's unfinished business in that area, too. So what now with uh, Aries, all right, where I need to be aware of and things that I need to know has a whole lot to do with unfinished business. So there's a lot of resentment, anger and frustration from a lot of people. OK, because Mars, like I say, and now Mercury is going to be retrograding your head and your hands. Mars is your head, but Mercury is your hands. Right. So my hand and my hands, I don't have those things anymore as I'm trying to move through life. We don't have them. Right. So now all you have is the rest of your body to operate. So that's what I'm saying. Your eyes are not working right now. We have inside eyes where who we trust, who we're around, your inner guide. All right. Mama, spirit, the moon, trust your mama. OK. And so this your mama can't see she's not out during the day. That's why your daddy out during the day. So at night you have to trust the moon. You have to be in tune with the moon. That's why you have to be in tune. This is a song that we are playing. You guys, this is music to your life and you cannot be offbeat. OK. And so a lot of us are offbeat a lot, you know, and we are we thrive as a people. We always on beat. We got some good rhythm. All right. And so that's why it got to be something really going on in our life for any of us to be offbeat to something that is just for us. Right. So that's why we have to understand that as planets do things, it's never to hurt you. It's always to help you. The only reason why planets even retrograde, because like I say, it's like a pause in your life. Retrogrades mean forgiveness. Retrogrades mean second chances. Retrogrades mean cleaning out your closet. Retrogrades mean allowances. You're like a child. If you go in here and go fix this, I'm going to get you something. The next few weeks, you get to get this. What do you want? And guess what? We get to even tell the universe what we want because this new moon in Libra is coming up. So guess what? When the moon starts to wax after that new moon, yeah, wax and give us, yeah, tell me what you want. All right. But right now you also are taking a test. And this is why there's a problem. Is there's so much going on in these universal streets, you know, that I know that there's everything stimulating our senses that we are all over the place. So this is why the universe is telling you to grab a partner right now in class. So for it to be um, Libra season, cuffing season, partnerships, relationships, all of those things, contracts. This is why we're initiating them. This is why you should have been initiating them all month because it's saying you're going to need a partner for something that we're about to go through. So this is why spouses, business, it, different reasons why people are hooking up. Now, we're not making it official right now because it's still a retrograde. You don't give anybody your word during a retrograde. Why? Because you got to clean your room. You can't go outside. You can't do anything. OK, but you do need a partner to go through this thing. All right. And as we go down to the basement, sometimes we can't go through the basement by ourselves. So you're going to need a partner or you're going to need backup because you don't know what might come back out to you. And some of us know our lives and some of us are not aware. So a lot of us are going to be having very deep dreams. Um, Scorpio, especially where you depending on where you have it. Those are like um, that's a nighttime sign. That's a nighttime energy. So anything I would say between eight and twelve. Or I would even say 8 and 2 a.m. A lot of us are going to be having very vivid dreams. A lot of these things are going to be coming back to us, things that we couldn't remember or things that we can finally put into words now. So I would say pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to your thoughts. Write things down, especially when you wake up in the rising. It's going to help you later um, when things go back direct. You'll see why. You get to watch the own, your own movie of your own life when planets retrograde. You get to go back and see situations replay out. People, places and things that come back to you, you know, so you really do get to fix situations. It's not always the same people. Sometimes it's just the same energy where you get to reinvent yourself. Things you didn't get to say to that person. Now the situation or the energy will repeat itself. Now you can say what you needed to say to this person. You know, you get to get your one and a lot of people trying to get their one with Mars retrograding. So that's why I say it's unfinished business with my mind, with my head and with my sight and with my hands and the things that need to get done. So a lot of people are going to feel like they can't get nothing done. A lot of people are going to feel in a state with your depressed state, depressed. All right. So depressed, you're not really pressed. You have to be pressed. So to be depressed means you're not pressed. OK, so you shouldn't be pressed about anything. So you want to unpress. All right. You want to decompress. Um, so this is why spiritual baths and all that that goes back to water. 
during um, Scorpio season. I'm sorry, it's not Scorpio season. It's about to be Scorpio season. But while we're retrograding in um, Scorpio, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to that. Now, it is going to be Scorpio season. We, it's going to start next week. And we're going to be retrograding in Scorpio season. So the sun is going to be there. Okay. And the, uh, Mercury is going to be here. There's going to be a lot to learn. So even though we don't have our hands, the universe is going to bring light in dark areas when the sun goes into Scorpio. So a lot of things are going to be revealed. So that goes back to unfinished business. People who, like I said, were violated, molested, issues, mentally, physically, and spiritually molested. Because you can get molested and violated in more than one way. Okay? So people who took away from you, you got a lot of people calling out family members. <clears throat> you have a whole lot of people saying what happened to them. You have a whole lot of people that are saying this many years ago, wrong people. And it needs to happen because this goes back to the generational curses and the healing that needs to take place. And so when our family and um, things that happen in our family and they die with secrets, you are dying with keys and you are dying with keys that our children need to unlock themselves. And so when our ancestors and our family and our mama's mama's mama and uncles and all these people die with secrets and things that we need to know, you are locking your family and your children back in these closets with things that can be unlocking them and taking them out and setting their lives over. And we can really be getting the healing that we really, really need. And that's why mental health is a, such a big thing. And it's so many of us that need that help in that area. And there's so many of us that get messages. So this goes back to Mercury being in Scorpio. So many of us get messages. All right. And don't know what to do with them. And don't have structure to them. So you have a whole lot of people on medicine, medications that have been diagnosed with mental illnesses and all those things. And that goes back to not having structure to your magic and not having structure to the things that you say, not having structure to the messages that you're receiving. So we're quick to throw you away and call you crazy. And that's not true. And it really just makes me sad and mad is a lot of our people and a lot of our family that are the most gifted on the side of the streets right now asking for change or in the next mental institution right now. And they're taking medicine and, you know, and shoving it down their throats and shutting out our ancestors and shutting out our messages that we need to be having. And so we have to pay attention to that when we have structure. And that's why I say I go live because there's a lot of people who have things going on in their mind and they need they don't have anybody to talk to or connect with. And they think that they are crazy, you know, and you're not. You're magical. You're powerful. You, there's so much inside of you. And we don't have we're not in the right environment all the time. We are all flowers. We're plants. And some of us have to be uprooted and be repotted and be in a different environment to really thrive the way we're supposed to. And so a lot of us walk around thinking we're wrong because um, we're surrounded by ignorance in our families. You know, so a lot of us are the black sheep of our family or however. So you feel misunderstood and you think you're crazy and you're not. You know, and so when you don't have structure, you end up singing your coulda, shoulda, would is on the side of the road. That's why it's some of the most powerful, most magical ones are asking you for change and they know the way and they have direction and they know a lot, you guys. And so that's what I'm saying. And they own medicine, too, and they get their little monthly check and all that. And they don't have to be like that. And that goes back to not having structure and not having anybody to talk to. That goes back to being mentally or spiritually molested, knowing that there was something going on and there was a power inside of us. And a lot of us didn't have a comfortable place to go. So we were spiritually homeless. A lot of us have been mentally, physically and spiritually homeless. We didn't have a safe place to go with our spirit. We didn't have a safe place to go with our bodies. We didn't have a safe place to go with our mind. Nobody to talk to, nobody to release these things. And this is why you'll end up being an emotional hoarder inside you're hoarding things or you talk to yourself because you still talk to these energies and you still talk to these spirits right because it's in you mama is always talking to you but you don't have an answer or response for some of these things now think about a lot of us that's going through our spiritual journey who've never checked our messages think about you people who've never checked their voicemail before you got all kinds of voicemails you got all kinds of text messages to your phone right because it's a connection true so think about that people who are just now coming and waking up into their journey Think about the years and years and years of messages, right, that you've been getting and you didn't know what to do with it. Or now you're just now getting them and you're late. And really, you've never been late before because time is not real. When we're talking about the universe, you are the time. And so your time starts whenever you decide. You've never been late before. You know, you're always on time, you guys. And we don't know this, you know. And so that's why it's a passion for me because y'all all belong to me. Y'all are mine. You look like me. You have my eyes. You got my nose. Y'all are mine. 
And it's important for you guys to know who you are, because the, if you don't know, your children are not going to know. And if your children don't know, their children are not going to know. And so now we're going back to generational curses and pain and we're going further and further back into the grave. And this is our time to rise right now. And matter of fact, we've never even been in the grave. We've just been told that we've been told that we were black. We were told that we were dead. We were told a whole lot of things. And so we all have to get out of our conditioning. And so this is what this retrograde is about. It's very powerful. You guys, you got to think about things in your life from the past six and a half years. So it's not just right now. In the six past six and a half years, the things that have been taking place, even going back to the past 13 years of our lives, it's a lot of things that's coming in. So you got to think about the reruns and movies of your life and parts of your life and episodes you've already seen before, but you got to see it again. So the parts that you cringe at, that you wish you never had to go back through and review, the universe is going to make you review it right now, today. And you have to decide that you're done and you have to decide that I'm not going to be the same anymore. And you have to decide that I'm going to name this a different chapter and I'm going to call it something different. And I don't want to be scared to go down my own steps in my own life when it comes to my basement. And when people come into my life and when it comes to my healing, I want to be able to say that I'm done in this area. And I want to be able to welcome people in my basement and I want to be able to fix my basement basement up to where now I can have company here. And it's not an area where I say, hey, y'all can't go in there because that's what people who don't have healing when you go in their life. When they have areas where they need, they have trauma, you can't even look them in their eyes. You can't come in here, right? You can't even knock on their door. They don't want to look you in the eye or anything. There's pain here. And this is so important. Your eyes are very, very important. And so we have to think about that, you guys. People who say, oh, don't go in that room. You a damn hoarder. That's why. You've been hoarding shit for years. This is why. And this is why it also affects your chakras. Your chakras are connected to your endocrine system, you guys. Your endocrine system has so much to do with your health, okay? And so you don't even understand how a lot of us are dying, sick, all of this, and it ain't nothing but a, a blocked chakra. Things you needed to say, things you needed to get off your heart, things you needed to express, and you will die of a broken heart of disappointment. And socially, all right, medically, we're going to say it was a uh, heart disease. Nah, you're a whole disappointment. OK, you got all kinds of secrets. That's what that is. And so you have to think about that, you guys, when you're talking about your life. And so you don't want to be like I say, the person singing there could have, should have, would have. I talk to people on the street all the time and I get them change and I buy them lunch. Why? Because they give me direction and you can't choose and you can't pick and choose who your enlightener is. And a lot of us want to be cute and pretty and all of this and describe what our spiritual journey has been like. And you're liars. And so this is the thing. And I've had said this before, you know, to have that spiritual orgasm, you got to be able to face the pain first. You can't ascend. You can't orgasm. You can't do any of those things. Even an orgasm is a mental thing. So if you're not mentally clear, you can't physically orgasm. You can't get your enlightenment. You can't get any of those things. Everything that the universe has promised you, if you keep holding clothes and bad memories and boxes of stuff in the closet of your life, let that shit out. And a lot of us don't do that. And so you get what I'm saying? You overeat. We are emotional eaters. A lot of us are overweight. Even I had gained weight during the, um, during the uh, quarantine. Like, man, I was eating my emotions away. Man, I mean, I turned into a thick, to a thick, thick. I was like thicky, thicky, thick. And that was just nothing from me eating my emotions. I mean, I'm saying though, you know, and I'm going to be honest, I'm an emotional eater. So my weight goes up and down. My weight changes. And so my relationship with food is real funny. OK, I've been fasting for like the past two days. I'm talking to y'all right now, but I, I need something to eat, you know, but this is also um, me starving my demons. You get what I'm saying? I have to starve my demons because my demons love sweets. My demons love smoking. My de demons love a little alcohol here or there. Like I know how my, de that my demons got good taste. They expensive as hell. OK. And because I know that I know myself, I starve the hell out of them. You ain't getting nothing. You ain't getting a drink. You ain't getting no weed. You're not getting any of those things because I know that what my my demons like. So this is why I say, you know what? I'm going to starve your ass. You know what? You ain't getting nothing. And you know who I'm going to feed? I'm going to feed the divine. So this is why I read and this is why I meditate and this is why I check my messages. You get what I mean? And this is what aligns me. And so that's why I say your seatbelt is knowing your value as you go down here. And so you don't run into the ditch. You don't want to run into a ditch again. So in your vehicle of life, Taurus is your seatbelt. Your vibration is your seatbelt. This is what keeps you safe, you guys. 
This is what keeps us safe. And so this is what keeps you safe from the highways and the byways of life because Sagittarius is a highway and byway. But before you can get to the highway, right, it's a ditch over here. That's Scorpio. That's the lesson of life. That's your first accident in life. And all of us have it. If you ever want to know where you have it at, count however many lines you have. Um, if anybody knows how to read a chart from your son to your Pluto, your first lesson, it shows you what age you were at your first lesson. You understand? And you won't be surprised. You'll damn near cry when you realize, oh, my God, that was my first lesson. That was the first time I crashed my vehicle, which is me. All right. You are your vehicle. You, you if you never have a car ever again in your life, you are your vehicle. OK, if you never live in another house ever again in your life, you are your house. You have never been homeless and you've never been without a vehicle. You have everything you need. And that's why I say when I talk to homeless people in my um, in my community and when I give them money and when I feed them, they're actually not homeless. There have been times that I've been more homeless than them. And I got a house and I got a bed and I got everything. They know who they are, you know, and so they know what they're doing. And uh, so no God, God, they say when um, God won't put more on you than you can bear. We are our own guys. You would never do anything to violate yourself. You know what you're doing and anything you want to do to change, you will. And so those people know what they're doing and they're smart. And that's what I'm saying. They're smarter than half of us on here. And they don't even have a phone. They're not even on Facebook. You know, the real enlighteners are not on Facebook and the real enlighteners. We wouldn't even normally typically talk to. And the real enlighteners are going to ask you for a damn dollar. OK, <laughs> they're going to do it. They really are. They really are. And you got to be OK with that. And those are just people who lost their way. You understand? Those are just people who lost their way. And so I had to charge my phone back up. But um, my phone's about to die on you guys. So this is what Mercury and Scorpio is teaching you. You can't judge who what God looks like. You can't say what your enlightenment looks like. You can't decide what your lesson is going to be. Um, you have to just be willing to walk into the situation and change your life. You have to be able to move furniture. If you need help, if you need a partner, get a partner. This is what Libra season is here for. Hey, I got this heavy ass couch. I need to get out my basement. I got all these drama and this trauma. I need to get up out my basement. You get you a partner. You get you somebody that's going to help you move those things out of your life. And a lot of times this is like I say, it's personal work. This is an elevator. You an elevator button goes up. You push the button to go up. And the only time you come down is to save somebody else. And so this is why I say, you guys, you know, God only protects babies and fools. And if you're not a baby and you're not a fool, you on the clock. You are on the clock right now. You at work. And a lot of us don't realize that, you know. And so that's why I say you're not a fool. You're not a fool because the wisdom lets you know when you made a mistake. And so you have to understand that. And a lot of us, um, that's what goes back to the business of your life is you have to understand how to do accounting. And a lot of us are not accountable, so we don't count right. And we appoint at everybody else and not ourselves. So this is the time, that's why I say, do the dirty work. If you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to get in the dirt when it comes to your healing, you're going to come back on top. And you have to think about by the end of this year, because right now Jupiter is in Capricorn. When it goes in the to be clean, I apologize. Somebody was calling me. But um, I always say, if you want to graduate, do what you got to do to get your credits. And instead of really getting your credits, you're getting your degrees. And I, like I said before, the brother, the degree means to go deeper. It doesn't mean to go up. A degree to, means to go down. And brother taught me that. And that's why I love us when we build together and we learn different things together. So you're going deeper and down further into a situation to earn a degree. And so this is why we're earning our degrees through astrology. And so there's 30 degrees to assign. So right now we're about 17 to 18 degrees in um, Libra. So we're 17 to 18 days into Libra. So that also represents our hour. So that's why I say everybody's chart is different about when your midnight hour is. But this is when a lot of us are get the most awakening. There are certain times assigned to your house. So another brother had asked me earlier about what the houses are. The houses give you the time. So that's why your birth time is so very important in your life. So that when someone gives you an actual time about when to look look forward to things. I can tell you right now that most Scorpio is going to be up between two and 6 a.m. They're going to have that moment where mama's going to wake you up and she got a message and you better get your ass up. And sometimes it's to save your life. And so Scorpio also represents the thief in the night. 
Okay, so Scorpio, as I say, things that move in the darkness or things where we have to figure out what that sound is in the darkness of our house, right? And that's why I say you can't have fear. You got to feel very secure with what you're doing when you're talking about Scorpio energy. And it doesn't always mean anything bad. You can be thinking you hear a sound and it's, it's not even what you think it is. Or it can be something that can help you later. Or like I said, when you're going around and looking in your um, basement of your life and you're trying to find things or you're having this yard sale of life. This is when we find things we haven't seen in a while that we can use. And we find things we don't no, no longer need or that we can throw away. And so this is when we um, that unfinished business, even going back to Mars with that Mars retrograde, that's really going to actually help a lot of people with that Mercury retrograde. So, you know, um, now that I'm I'm looking for my head now that I don't have the proper gun for whatever protection I need. Well, now I got to use my mind. And so this helps us go further and further into ourselves and gives you the proper tools. You have everything that you need wherever you're not restricted. Wherever you don't have restrictions, I would say, or wherever you don't have structure, wherever you don't have discipline, everywhere where you're lazy at. Yeah. Yeah. Mercury going to get you. It's happening right now. You're in trouble. All right. But everywhere where you've been putting in the work, you're going to see the benefit of it. So that's why I say the retrograde is not always bad and it's not always scary for everybody. Not everybody does their homework. So the people who don't do their homework, your dog ate your homework. Fine. OK. In the ditch you go further. My phone, I'm so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this live because it's a phone call I do need to take and it's gonna, they're going to keep calling. But um, think about that, you guys. Think about that. Mending things, fixing things, things that you weren't willing to talk about before. Be willing to talk about it now. So the partners sometimes are a therapist or a psych psychologist for some people. That's who the partner is with some people. The partner could be your spouse. The partner could be God. OK, your first contract ever is always going to be with God and with um, your higher power. So if there's no one else you can talk to. You can talk to God and you can make sure that you're getting the clarity that you need and you're receiving the messages. And that's why I say write down things when you're having dreams, anything like that, anything significant that takes place. You want to make sure that you're able to reach your peak. And so that's why you want to get everything out of your way so you can reach your peak. So I call it a spiritual orgasm, but you don't have to call it that. I say that because it is like that and you feel it through your entire body when there's a moment when there's information or something that you collect that just really rocks your world and rocks your whole soul. Like those are the moments and it's better than sex. And I promise you that. And this is why a lot of spiritual people can. Go I'm sorry. Why um, spiritual people can go very long um, periods of time without having sex. And that's because that goes back to because they're feeding their spirit. They're not feeding the flesh. They're not feeding the body. So this is why fasting is so very important. Venus is in Virgo right now, you guys. So fasting is just excellent right now, especially if you fast during this retrograde. You will starve the hell out of the demon. You're not giving it what you normally give it. If you drink coffee, if you eat sugar, any of those things that you normally do with your energy to where it's making you feel even more low. Once you get rid of those things, the demon has nowhere else to go. That dark energy has nowhere else to live. All right. The divine survives and thrives in a very clean environment. So this is why you don't have to be vegan, however, but people who eat clean, people who drink plenty of water, people who are on a regular schedule with their rest, prayer and meditation do have the most enlightenment. And so literally and figuratively, you got to go number two. You got to take a shit to get rid of the shit. You have to move the energy around and get rid of it. So this is why we're getting rid of things at our root chakra. But you have to move it around first at our sacral. And we have to mend things at our heart. And so once we realize that, you guys, man, it's just a one, one band, one sound. OK, we are all collectively a band. We all have a sound. We all have a place. We all have a part. And once everybody knows their part, collectively, we rise. Collectively, you'll hear the sound. Collectively, you'll be on the vibration. You'll realize what the alignment really feels like. And it feels really, really good when we all do it together. So there's no higher than lower because we need the sopranos. We need the bass. We need everybody. And right now, Scorpio is the bass, you guys. Scorpio is the base, you guys, because they change the beat. Right. And so right now we're dealing with the base. This is the baseline of your life. This is the baseline of your song. And you want to get things together before the beat drops in Aquarius, because Aquarius is your is your um, remix. <laughs> OK, that's why we're in the age of Aquarius. They change everything. But right now you're dealing with the bass. You're talking about the bass line, talking about that bass drum. You're talking about those deep, 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 deep sounds inside of you. And you don't want it rumbling around anymore. So this is why we're going to get rid of it. And, I, and this is why we're going to face it and confront it. And this is why we're going to become the healer after we heal. 
You have to be healed first and we're going to become the healer. And this is why the world is going to get hotter. It's going to get, you know, warmer for us because you have to think about somebody has turned our somebody has messed with our thermostat for one. Somebody has messed with our thermostat and somebody has really changed the temperature. All right. In our environment. And it's not an environment that we normally live in. So that's why I say collectively, we rise when we're happier, when we're healed. And this is when the world gets warmer. We have better, warmer days, all right, when we are happy people. And it takes one time, you know, for everybody to feel their bliss at least once, and you'll never go back to your darkness and to your, da your sad days again. So it takes that one time to wake up. It takes that one time for freedom. It takes that one, you know, orgasm. That's why I say mentally, physically, it takes one time. It takes the universe one time to tap that thing. And our lives change. You know, so each one teach one. And I mean, I'm telling you, I get tapped on all the time. And that's why I love tapping into you guys and just giving you guys the information and sharing with you guys. Um, no lie. All is well. But I am going to go. My phone is going to die and I have to make this phone call. But I hope this was helpful for anybody who wants to understand their emotions, their energy or anything that's happening during this retrograde. Reach out to me if anybody wants um, a one on one session. I'm definitely here. I'll put my information in my um, title and you guys have a really, really good night.